everyone welcome to my vlog channel if you're new to my channel welcome my name is Brianna and my channel is basically Bri123 some of you might know me on Instagram others might know me from my singing channel but this year I've decided to do vlog year which is where I vlog 365 days I decided to change things up a bit and do a question and answer video so on Instagram and on my previous vlog, I requested for you guys to ask me questions and I would answer them in this video. And I had a great response. And without further ado, let's get into the video. Well, when I was three years old, I used to visit my grandparents all of the time. And one of the things that my grandparents absolutely love is country music. And from what I can remember, country music the CMT channel where they show all the music videos for the country music, like the country music countdown, that was always on the television. And I loved Leanne Rimes. I don't know what it was about her, but I just grew up loving her. So from what my grandparents and my family have told me is that at three years old, Blue comes on. I was staring at the TV and singing that song at three, and my family was blown away by how a big voice came out of this little three-year-old body. And ever since then, I've been singing nonstop. Watching musicals definitely does. I remember when I was in third grade, I saw my first community production. Granted, I'd always been in productions at church, but they weren't secular musicals. I went with them to go see Charlotte's Web, and just seeing all the magic of the production really inspired me, and I went, I want to do that. Whenever I doubt my profession, I always go back to the theater and I always watch productions and I watch musicals and it just encourages me and inspires me and kind of reassures me that this is what I want to do with my life. Because you just, I want to be a part of that magic. Of course, who wouldn't? Broadway has always been a dream of mine. Do I think that I could be on Broadway? No. But is it a dream of mine? Absolutely. I'm 22. I moved out of my house, my parents' house, when I was 17 years old, a week after graduating high school. And the reason being is during my senior year of high school, my dad and I kind of had this impromptu idea to go to the Little Mermaid open call because Sierra Bacchus had just announced that she was leaving The Little Mermaid. So I figured, well, you know, why not give it a shot? Why not audition? So my dad and I drove from Nebraska to Colorado, and I auditioned for The Little Mermaid. The casting director was so excited, and I went on to the, sec the second part of Callbacks, and we sang Part of Your World Reprise, and she goes, great. Well, then before we go on, let me get all your information, and before she could even say any more as to whether I went on to the next callback. The casting director that was sitting right next to her whispers in her ear and points to my resume. One of the downfalls and one of the things you probably shouldn't do on professional resumes is put your age because it kind of just confines you and constricts you into one age range versus, you know, some people think I'm 27, some people think I'm 24, some think I'm 18. You know, it gives you that versatility to be a multiple ages versus that one age. So I had put on my resume that I was 17. And she just got so disappointed, and she looked at me and said, we would love to have you go to the next round of callbacks. However, Disney is very strict about their age, and you have to be 18 or older to be this particular role. She goes, however, you are perfect for Disney, and you're exactly what we're looking for. So I'm going to give you my card, and she gave me her card. And she said, what schools are you planning on going to? I ran off a list of schools that I was considering. As soon as I mentioned AMDA, she said, okay, if you go to AMTA, contact me, and I will go to your musical showcase at the end of your fourth semester, because I really think that you are perfect for Disney. Well, of course, that just kind of inspired me and triggered that passion of, okay, if a casting director thinks that I have the potential to be in Disney or Broadway or in this kind of profession, then... I must be good enough to be a part of this. And that just kind of triggered into, okay, I'm going to AMDA. Uh, other schools, forget about them because she said AMDA. So I auditioned for AMDA and I made it in. And they told me, would you like to do the summer program or the fall? And I said, rather do summer. Why not? She, so they contacted me and said, great, 
you start in two weeks. So I graduated and then a week after, I went to New York. Ooh, that is a tough one. But I think the best one would have to be Beehive, the 60s musical. Only because A, it was a professional gig and therefore the cast that we had, there were five of us and it was a five cast of women and the women in the cast were phenomenal. And the other thing is, because it was such a small cast, we didn't have any drama among us. We were, we hung out all the time. The musical in itself is such a fun musical. If you haven't seen it, I would definitely check it out. I was able to portray Connie Francis, Brenda Lee, and Janice Ian, and other characters as well, like the angels and all of that. But I love the 60s and the music that's in it. And so it was so fun to have so many different costume changes. Like within that production, I think I said I had... 12 wig changes and 12 costume changes or something along the lines of that I don't remember and the fact that all of us were able to put this production together within 10 days was phenomenal that theater company alone was a great experience because for the majority of our productions we had 10 days to memorize learn the music put the show together try on the costumes and perform in front of people in Clarksville Tennessee so yeah, so besides my rambling, Beehive the Musical is definitely probably my favorite musical I've been in so far. Okay, I'm going to do it in category. So comedic, it would definitely have to be Ursula from Bye Bye Birdie. Only because everyone hated that production, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. I had such a great time diving into that character and being someone who I wasn't at the time. Growing up, and I remember being in that production, I was very subdued, very quiet, because I lived a very sheltered lifestyle, so I was just very, very shy when it came to meeting other people. So they, when I was cast at this role, I think majority of people were like, why would she get Ursula? Ursula's supposed to be this crazy fan of Conrad Birdie. Why would Brie get it? And I remember the first time that we ran through the scene, it was the part where Conrad Birdie first comes in and we sing We Love You Conrad and my character says something about snarling, raging, panting jungle beast and I'm grabbing onto his leg. Well, I did this and I did this growling type thing. I don't know what it was. I can't remember it. But everyone just started busting up because they didn't expect it. And I didn't think that they were going to laugh at me. But it was roles like that, or Ado Annie, or Brenda Lee, that they're more of the comedic roles that I just really enjoyed. And Ursula I had so much fun doing because I also remember we had a huge bunk bed in the middle of the crowd for the telephone song. And so I would get in and I would lay there when the audience was in so I could just hear everyone ch chatting and it was so cool to hear everyone talk. And all of a sudden I would pop up and, did you hear about Kim? And people didn't expect someone to be right then and there in the audience. So that was so much fun to be a part of that. As far as serious roles, I would say Fontaine was definitely my favorite role. I actually wanted to be Cosette, only because I had a crush on the Maris who was in the production, but I'm so happy that I got Fontaine. And I, I just really connect with her. And at that time, my grandma, my great grandma passed away during the production and Les Mis was her first Broadway production that she had seen, and it was her favorite. And so my way of showing respect for her was to do the production for her. And Fontaine is just one of those roles where she has so much depth. She's so much character. And she's obviously a more realistic character versus other characters that I portrayed that it was really fun to dive into I Dreamed a Dream. And I remember I would be bawling at the end of the song or even when... There's this song where, you know, Fontaine is being arrested and just crying because I knew that my daughter wouldn't live if I were to be put into jail. It's just different roles like that where you just really get to dive into your emotions and dive into the character and become the character and live out her life. That, that role in itself was so much fun and I would love to do that role all over again if I could. To be a Disney princess. I don't care, any any Disney princess would be fun, even to originate a Disney princess. But to be a Disney princess would be an ultimate goal of mine. It sounds so silly to be a 22-year-old and dream to be a Disney princess. But, you know, anything is possible, right? 
Ooh, something that's not about my career. Um, pozole. I love pozole. Something about me is I'm half Mexican, and so we eat a lot of Mexican food at my grandparents' house in Corona. Oh, enchiladas and tamales and arroz con pollo. Oh, all of it is so good. But pozole, if I had to eat one thing every single day for the rest of my life, it would be pozole. It is so good. And if you like Mexican soups, not menudo. I do not like menudo. This has chicken in it. But a pozole is definitely my favorite. Turquoise. It Had to Be You by Dara McLean. And I actually have a cover of that song on my YouTube channel. So I will put that in the links down below. And I'll also add it right here so you can just click on that. But it is such a beautiful song. And a song that I definitely want to be played at my wedding. If and when I do get married. This counts but beautiful by Wayne Brady the one where it goes uh, from the moment I saw you that song is so beautiful and I would love that to be played at my wedding as well but that would definitely be my favorite Disney song and then favorite movie Beauty and the Beast I could watch that movie over and over and over and over and over again salt I don't like Angelina Jolie but I really like that movie or the Lincoln lawyer that's a good one or taken I like more thriller kind of movies. Yeah, so probably, probably Salt would be my favorite. Parenthood. I just, I love that show and all the characters in it. If you haven't checked out Parenthood, it's on Netflix, so go check it out. It is 1.40 p.m., and that is California PST. My first role was Baby Jesus in our production when I was a baby. Actually, I think it was like two or three months old. They needed a baby Jesus to be in our Christmas production, and they had me. And from what my parents said is that I was always kind of like the star, only because when they lifted up baby Jesus, I raised my hands like I was saying, here I am, or yes, God, take me. So yeah, that was my first role ever. Well, that is so hard because there's so many talented people on IG. I would love to be in Wicked as Glinda and I think it would be so much fun to co-star with Isabel is my name singing or Broadway songs as Alphaba and I think it would be so much fun if somehow we could figure out how to collaborate and I could sing with Isabel Loathing and I could sing with Kaylee or Callie, I don't know how to pronounce her name, but I could sing with her for good. I think that would be so much fun because they are amazing singers, amazing actresses, and I could definitely have so much fun portraying a Glinda against them as Alphaba. I don't see my family and friends only because they push me to follow my dreams and to do what I love most, and they're always there for me. And plus I have very talented family and friends who inspire me to continue to be in this career and to go for my dreams. I only had a year of voice lessons and that was when I went to AMDA. I had training then, but other than that, the only vocal lessons that I technically had was um, from my dad. My dad was a music pastor for a while and so he coached me even though fun fact he cannot sing he taught me how to develop head voice because i couldn't do it and he helped me create vibrato which i used to call vombrato and i told dad dad i don't want vombrato and he would always make fun of me he's like well brianna you can't have vombrato you could have vibrato but you can't have vombrato so yeah he's pretty much been my coach but professionally i haven't had any voice lessons besides that one year of vocal training. There's so many that surprise me on IG. I mean, there's a lot of talent, a lot of young talent on IG, but I would have to say the person that definitely surprised me the most, because I didn't expect that kind of voice to come out of such a little body, was Broadway and things. And I mentioned her in one of my previous vlogs. I showed a clip of her singing and my reaction to her voice, because her voice is bananas. It is out of this world. Every time she posts a video, there is not one video that I think, ooh, that's not in her range, or ooh, that's too sharp, or ooh, that's too harsh. Why would she belt that? Her voice is just 
perfection. I just can't not wait to see her in a couple of years because I bet her voice is going to blow everyone's mind away. It already blows away my mind, but I bet in a few years it's going to be like better than Idina Menzel. Like it's going to be Eden Espinoza type of voice. My hair is not dyed right now. This is actually my natural hair color. It's finally grown out, but I used to dye my hair all the time. The first time I dyed my hair was when I was 12 years old, and it was my second time portraying Annie, and at this community theater, they said whoever gets Annie has to chop their hair to their, well, they said to their shoulders, but they ended up chopping my hair to my chin and dye it red. My hair was down to my back, and I had never cut it before, and then it went here in red. But then I didn't dye my hair until I went to college, and then I went through a phase where I wanted my hair to be pretty much every single color. So I've been every single color except for blonde. I just didn't want to bleach my hair. Sadly, I don't. But I have promised myself that if I am not in a relationship, by the time I am 24, I am getting myself a dog. <laughs> and all my family makes fun of me, but I am very serious because I need some kind of affection in my life, and so I will be getting a dog if within two years I am not in a relationship. I studied musical theater at AMDA New York, which is the American Musical and Dramatic Academy in New York City, and I did the summer program, which was a two-year conservatory, and it was a two-year program condensed into about a year and a half. No, I have yet to be in a movie, but I have been in a commercial. There was um, a local commercial in New York. I was the bank teller, and I walked the father down the aisle of the bank. Other than that, I haven't been an extra in any movies. She didn't specify if it was professional or not, so I wrote down pretty much all the productions I've been in. As far as church is concerned, I've been in well over 25 productions. I don't remember, but the main productions that I've been in that I was leads were Baby Jesus in our Christmas production. I was Belle in A Cratchit Kid in Scrooge. I was Katie in The Christmas Post, Anna in No Room for Love, and Mary in Two for Bethlehem. And the majority of those productions my dad actually wrote the scripts for. As far as school is concerned, I was Annie in Annie, Ariel in The Little Mermaid, and that was in elementary school, both of those. In middle school, I was Little Red in Little Red Riding Hood. In high school, I was Cinderella in Into the Woods, Natalie slash Ed in All Shook Up, and Fontaine in Les Mis. For community theater, I was in The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, Little House on the Prairie, Wizard of Oz, Pollyanna, Tom Sawyer, Anna Green Gables, Narrator 2 in Joseph, Ursula in Bye Bye Birdie, Bette in Oliver, Annie in Annie, Mabel in Pirates of Penzance, Cinderella in Cinderella, Ado Annie in Oklahoma, Susical, Guys and Dolls, and a silly girl in Beauty and the Beast. And then for professional shows, I was Nurse slash Sarah in The Civil War, the musical, Connie Francis slash Brenda Lee slash Janice Ian slash Angels in Beehive, the 60s musical, Lucy in A Tale of Two Cities, the play, Fan slash Belle slash Mary in A Christmas Carol, and then currently I am hosting Pets Rule at SeaWorld, but I've also been a host of Shamu's Rise and Shine, Countdown to Halloween, and I was also a Pathway character at SeaWorld. My dad plays the piano, my mom sings, she's actually a tenor, my brothers sing, my aunt sings, I have a lot of uncles and cousins who play the guitar, my grandma Julie, she sings, my aunt sings, um, so a lot of people sing within my family, so we definitely have like a musical background within my family. Well, uh, first things first, I make sure that I get all of the necessities that I need for the dog, my little treats that I give them. I pray. I also do a quick speed run through of the lines, especially if there are any changes within the show, uh, modifications. I just quickly run through the lines, that way I don't stop in the middle of the show because I am narrating and the lead of the show minus the animals and oh the slide that I go down there's like a little spot where I can check and I always look and see the audience kind of scope out my surroundings I love horses I've only been horseback riding once and it was bareback when I was probably I want to say 11 but I had such a blast and they are such wonderful beautiful creatures and if I had the pot if I had the chance I would definitely go horseback riding again 
Les Mis. I love that production. It's such a wonderful show. The music is great. Typically, the actors are phenomenal. The storyline is beautiful, and overall, it's a musical that if I could be in again, I would. And I, it's one of those musicals where I don't mind being in the audience and watching it because it's just a well done musical. I love working at SeaWorld. The people there are wonderful. The pay is great. The fact that I get to perform in front of millions of people is so much fun. But I do wish that I could sing. So if SeaWorld were ever to offer me a position where I could sing at the park, then I would be set. I would be golden. That would be great. But until then, I'm going to continue to audition for musicals, audition for Disney, and see where God takes me. Absolutely. First of all, I am not a belter. I am a, what I call a fake belter because I mix a lot. But one thing I would say for tips, for me, as far as belting is concerned, I like to place, have the placement in my nose. That way it's easier and it's, it's, it sounds prettier. I don't know. It's, oh, I hate giving tips because I'm not very good at it. The other thing too is to relax in the high note. I know for me, I tend to tense up and when you tense up, it just, your vocal cords tense and it just sounds bad. And I know a lot of girls try to hit those high notes at such a young age, but don't. If it's too high, don't do it because it sounds like you're screeching. No one wants to listen to a screeching singer. For me, as far as warming up to get into the high notes, I actually sing more of like opera. So I remember when I did a change in me at high, I'm not in high school, in college, instead of immediately going to the belt, I would do like, and I, I never thought I'd be behind. Like I would just do it more in like an operatic style and people used to make fun of me, but it allowed me to warm up those high notes so that I had no problems hitting those high notes going into the productions. But other than that, I mean, I don't know. I'm not a belter, so I'm the worst person to give belting tips to. Like I mentioned earlier, I started singing at three, but I didn't realize that I had talent until I was eight. I think I was eight. In third grade, as I mentioned, we did Annie at my elementary school. And I was very, very shy to the point where my first grade teacher thought I needed to go into special ed because she thought something was wrong with me. And my third grade teacher, when I told her that I was auditioning, just felt bad because she knew that I wasn't going to get the role. And even going in after I had callbacks for Annie, my dad sat me down on the day that the cast list was going to go up. And he said, you know, Brie, you're probably not going to get the role. It's probably going to go to someone else. But that's okay. Just congratulate the girl who got the role. I went and I checked the cast list and sure enough I got the role which I was so excited about because growing up Annie was my favorite movie to watch. I remember I told my third grade teacher and she without telling anyone went in and listened to me sing at my callback and was blown away by this big voice that came out of this tiny shy little body and so she said you know what you're gonna call your dad. So within the middle of our class, I called my dad and told him that he was surprised and shocked and blown away that the fact that his daughter got the lead for her first production, which I was too. After every show, my grandparents would get comments or my family would get comments of, oh, that must have been the recording. That wasn't her. Oh, she must have been lip singing, which made me feel good because if people think that, then okay, maybe I do have the talent. Maybe I am talented. Interesting question. I wish on 11-11. If there's any 11-11, I always wish on it. I pray before each show. That's something that I always do. I always pray before each show and I make sure if someone says good luck, I'm like, no, 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 it's break a leg. Oh, I always knock on wood. I always do that. I always have to check closets before I go to bed and underneath my bed to make sure nothing's there. And I sing everything. I mean, as you guys know in my vlogs, I sing everything. I sometimes wish that life was a musical, so it would make sense for me to just break out into song and sing everything. I have my keepsake here that I will always keep in treasure, but my favorite stuffed animal is this one. I got this when I was a baby. His name is Russ, and he's always been my favorite. And you know, the toys that I've had growing up, everyone could play with, but no one could play with this bear. So I'm hoping to give this to my daughter when she's born. But uh, yeah, this has been my favorite. As far as movies concerned, um, growing up it was Beauty and the Beast and Annie. Annie isn't my favorite anymore. 
Um, I probably should watch it again, and I'll probably fall in love with it all over again, but Beauty and the Beast I can watch constantly. As far as artist is concerned, Thomas Kincaid has always been my favorite. And my favorite song would have to be You Are My Sunshine, because my mom and I used to sing that all the time. And it's just a song that is dear to my heart. And Butterfly Kisses is something that my dad and I would always do. Before going to bed, he would always give me Butterfly Kisses. So those are some memories that I'll always hold as my favorite. That is a very creative question. I would have Anna sing When Will My Life Begin because I think that her character could relate to Rapunzel's as far as being locked up in her castle. And then I think it would be interesting as far as the situation is concerned to have Pocahontas replace Belle only because I think that she would handle the situation much differently. And I think it would be fascinating to have a conversation between, I know she's not a princess, but have a conversation between Megara and Giselle only because they are so different in personalities and I think because Giselle is so happy happy go lucky that Megara would make it a point to make sure that she told all the negative things in life to Giselle and I just think it would be a very interesting conversation. Beauty and the Beast. I relate to Belle, I understand Belle, she's been my favorite princess all of my life. If I ever get the role of Belle, even if it's in a community theater, I would be on cloud nine. Um, that has always been my dream role and will always be my dream role until I become Belle. And one day it will happen. I don't know when. I don't know how. I've been performing professionally for about three and a half years, non-professionally for about 22 years. Well, if I could originate roles, I would love to originate, and I don't think these would ever become Broadway musicals, but I would love to originate Giselle in Enchanted or Snow White in Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, only because I love those princesses and it would be so much fun to create and become those characters. As far as productions or Broadway musicals that are around today, I would say I would love to be Glinda in Wicked, Guinevere in Camelot, Belle in Beauty and the Beast, Fontaine in Les Mis, or even Eponine, or even Cosette. Either of the characters in Les Mis I would love to be. Maria in Sound of Music, and Jasmine in Aladdin the Musical Spectacular here in California. I'm sure there are more, but those are the ones that just immediately popped into my mind. The main advice I could possibly give you is to take classes, acting classes, dance classes. I wish I took dance classes when I was a young girl. And get involved in productions. If you can take voice lessons, if you have the finances to do all of that, start it now. It's best to start it when you're young. That way when you're older you don't have to worry about it as much because you have had all of that background and all of that training. Other than that, I would say for young girls, don't try to force the notes. Meaning, I know that a lot of you want to sing Alphaba songs or to sing Elsa songs, but don't try to hit the notes if they are too high for you because you could damage your vocal cords. I know it's tough and you want to sing them, but a lot of times it comes out really harsh and it sounds like you're screaming and it is not pretty. So stick with Annie, stick with songs that are more for your vocal range and don't try to sing those songs. Like if you notice, I don't sing a lot of alphabet songs only because I can't sing those songs. And if I do sing the songs, I sing the parts that I can sing or I mix them because your vocal cords are so, are so delicate and you can easily get notes. I would say to not push the notes out. If you're going to hit them, make sure you're relaxed and to not force the notes to come out. So I hope that, I hope that's good advice. Like I said, I hate giving advice. I hate giving tips, but I hope that helps you out. But if out of anything, if you take from this video, take classes, dance classes, acting classes, voice lessons, get involved with your theaters and your choirs, anything that you can possibly do to just surround yourself with musicals, theater, the arts, anything in general will help you out. Final question. Okay. Artists that inspire me. Well, for Broadway, I would have to say, you know, Laura Osnes, Sierra Bogus, those kind of ingenues obviously inspire me. And then for contemporary music, like pop music and all of that, I would say Ben Rector, Ingrid Michaelson, 
Dara McLean, Bridget Mendler, you know, those more eclectic singers. Those are all the questions. Thank you so much for all those questions. I ended up having 40 questions because I condensed a couple of them into just one question, or one answer, I should say. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's going to be a really long video. I might have to do it in two parts. I don't know, but I'm going to go edit the video now. So I hope you guys have a great day. And if you're not subscribed, subscribe. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like this video, still give it a thumbs up. And leave any requests down below. Like I said, I'm doing this vlog here for 365 days. So I will be vlogging tomorrow as I am going to Disney on ice. And I will be vlogging from here on out. Thanks for watching this video, and I'll see you tomorrow.